over 11,000 members nationwide, 50 states and 28 countries. They carry the flag proudly. They acquire, restore, and conserve American Armed Services Combat Military Aircraft to honor the brave men and women who serve. Organizationally, their members stand the watch. In total, it's the largest flying museum in the world. It's known by the name Ghost Squadron, and it represents a heritage never to be forgotten. It's better known by its formal name, the Commemorative Air Force. Headquartered in Dallas, known as the CAF, they fly in air shows and special events around America, educating the public regarding the men and women who have flown and fought to defend America and freedom around the world. Originally known by the name Confederate Air Force, dating back to the 1940s, in 2001, the membership voted a name change to what it is today, better reflecting their mission. It was at the airport in Newborn, North Carolina in August of 1946. Two former World War II Army Air Corps pilots organized the first CAF unit to promote private flying and airport improvements and facilities in the southern states. Engaged as flight instructors by the Newburn Aviation Company, J.W., Mike Holton, and Albert T. McSorley rallied their 60 students to become members and issue pins and certificates to rated pilots. Generals McSorley and Holton commissioned each qualified member as a full colonel into the newly created CAF. They were on their way. Membership swelled, a gesture of the World War II services camaraderie, new divisions, each with their own bylaws, constitutions, general meetings, and annual gatherings. And it happened quickly when service women from the war joined the effort too. Elizabeth Randolph Allen from Annapolis, a former wave navigation instructor, organized the Maryland CAF division. Two dozen new members, including seven women, also commissioned as colonels. The idea to sign up everyone as a colonel caught on like wildfire. Oscar Harper took it and ran, organizing a national mail order business, and by 1954, 15,000 pilots and aviation aficionados across the country paid just $1 for their 9x12 engraved commission certificate authorizing their induction as a colonel into the non-existent CAF. Signed by fictitious Colonel Thaddeus P. Throckmorton, Secretary and equally fictitious, Colonel Jethro E. Culpepper, CAF recruiting officer, also sent letters of congratulations to the newly commissioned colonels. The CAF's popularity mushroomed. Accessories appeared in newspapers and magazines. The organization was on TV and radio shows. Famous people wanted to become colonels and wrote to Colonel Culpepper. Others becoming honorary recipients, including then-President Eisenhower, former President Harry Truman, and former Illinois governor and presidential nominee Adlai Stevenson. Oscar Harper boosted the CAF's popularity, and it grew nationwide. Divisions multiplied. In Mercedes, Texas, a group from the Mercedes Dusting Service formed a division, but took it to the next level when in 1957, six colonels pooled their funds to purchase a P-51 Mustang, establishing headquarters for the CAF at the Central Valley Airport in Mercedes. They later added two F-8F Bearcats and by 1961 had acquired 10 airplanes and 66 colonels. And now infamous Colonel Jethro E. Culpepper continued to arrive at the division's headquarters. But who really answered the mail? Lloyd Nolan, a pilot instructor during World War II, owner and operator of Mercedes Dusting Service. Nolan explained the purpose of the CAF was kind of a hobby where the guys like to keep in touch. In addition to the Mustang called Red Nose and two Bearcats, the squadron then consisted of an FG-1D Corsair, a B-25 Mitchell, an FM-2 Wildcat, a P-40 Warhawk, a P-38 Lightning, and three T-6 Texan trainers. The CAF was on its way, and the Air Force was growing. For in it, for the fun and camaraderie, the CAF's principal aviation activity consisted of airshow flying. They only charged for expenses, and by June 1961 had flown in six airshows across the Rio Grande Valley. They were in such demand because most of their pilots were active crop dusters. They often had to turn down show performances. Organizationally, the CAF continued to mature, and in 1961 they were chartered a Texas nonprofit. By 1965, they built their first museum building, moving to Harlingen, Texas, in 1968 operating from three large buildings. For the time being, they were home and would grow tremendously while there, acquiring larger airplanes, a B-29, B-17, and B-24, 
the Three Prizes, which significantly grew their national prominence. They were now serious about business and their mission. They searched from the Arizona desert to the jungles of Nicaragua to find just the right airplanes. But it just wasn't headquarters which grew. Their membership and plane collection expanded across the country. But it was tough. Their goal was to acquire a complete lineup of World War II combat aircraft to fly in air shows, telling the World War II story. Moving to Midland in 1991, then Dallas in 2015, the CAF oversees 87 regional wings in 28 states. Most of the wings reside in Texas, 24 in total. As of 2021, the Commemorative Air Force Ghost Squadron is comprised of aircraft primarily from 1939 to 1945 and were once referred to as ghosts from the past. The 245 aircraft currently in the collection consist of 21 bombers, 14 fighters, 136 trainers, 16 transports, 52 liaison, and 6 foreign aircraft. Some of the rare and valuable CAF aircraft include the last airworthy Curtis SB-2C-5 Helldiver, one of only two B-29s still flying, two original Japanese A-6M-0s, a SBD-5 Dauntless dive bomber, and a Russian Yak-3 fighter. In 1989, the CAF was recognized by the National Aviation Hall of Fame and declared the Air Force of Texas by then-Governor William Clements. In 1990, two new CAF-affiliated corporations were launched. The American Air Power Heritage Flying Museum, tasked with obtaining and maintaining the flying aircraft, and the American Air Power Heritage Museum, tasked with acquiring and displaying non-flying artifacts and exhibits. On Veterans Day 2021, the grand opening of the CAF's new National Air Base headquarters will take place in Dallas. The Henry B. Tippy National Aviation Education Center, flagship of the CAF's American Air Power Heritage Museum, opens to the public on November 11, 2021. The positive impact of those original goals remain paramount to their mission success and legacy. For their unequaled excellence preserving the history of American combat aircraft, with the intent of ensuring America never forgets the perils of a world which requires a strong and disciplined military capability, their willingness and genuine loyalty to their mission to educate through entertainment at air shows across America, their attention to detail and exactness in their depiction of how it was to ensure future generations are informed and inspired to maintain forces necessary to incorporate combat aviation lessons learned into enhanced doctrines, reflective of a constantly changing world. The San Diego Air and Space Museum takes great pride inducting the commemorative Air Force into the International Air and Space Hall of Fame.